Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win. This week we managed to catch up with Ron Karras, who's been an owner for many years in Cape Town and experienced his first double out at Kenilworth Racecourse last week. We also chat to Callan Murray, who's just recently made the move down to Cape Town from Johannesburg and he'll be riding for the Brett Crawford Stable. We also caught up with our G Fox Groom of the Month out at Paul de Montstad. Um, he's a very worthy winner of his hamper, and he is Felix from Paul de Mont. We're here at Paul de Montstad this morning where our G Fox April Groom of the Month is Felix. He does an awful lot of work here for Monique and uh, going to chat to him now. Felix, congratulations. You've won our G Fox Groom of the Month prize. We've got a lovely hamper of clothing. And Monique put you forward because you do um, a great job here. You uh, ride a lot of work. Yes. Now you're certainly the right size for riding and I know you've got a, a fabulous track here that you get to ride on. And, and you enjoy that side of things? Yes, I'm very and you also apparently do a lot of other things. You drive a tractor, you go to sales. So you're a little bit of a, a hands-on man here. Yes, yes, yes. And you've been here a long time? Yeah, I'm almost six years now. That's great. And family live here? Yes, and my family, I've got my wife and my baby. We are living here. Okay, what is your favorite part about your job? Uh, it's riding. You like the riding? Yes. I know Monique's got a, a great track here, so you get to do a lot of uh, fast track work. Yes. Yes. And do you, um, do you follow your horses when they go into training with the, with the trainers in the, on the race days? Yes, sometimes I follow them. Yeah. And you also uh, get very involved with the sales. Do you like going off to the sales? Yes, I like, I like a lot. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. And you've been in horses all your life, always been interested? Yes. Well, you're doing a fabulous job and you're the, definitely the right size for the riding. You could be a jockey. Yes. <laughs> well, well done, Felix. Ma thank many, you. many congratulations well, for winning you. the G-Fox hamper. Hope you enjoy wearing the clothing and, uh, yeah, best of luck for the future. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much to Felix. He's our April Groom of the Month. Thank you to G-Fox once again for the wonderful hamper. I hope he's going to enjoy wearing the clothing and continue the good work here at Paul de Mont. So without further ado, we'll take you into our interview with Ron Karras out at his offices in Milton earlier this week. Ron Karras is a very familiar face on the race courses here in South Africa and Cape Town in particular, and he's certainly having a very, very good run at the moment. Lots of winners, but he's just had his first double last week, and it's lovely to be in Ron's office this morning uh, to catch up with him. Ron, congratulations. It must have been an amazing feeling. I, I think I've, I saw your face when I first came to Cape Town many years ago, and uh, you're such a great follower of racing, and uh, a dream come true last week when you had your first double. Yes, definitely. Uh, it seemed like it took eternity to get the, that double and uh, it's it's an amazing feeling and uh, I really really enjoyed the day when it happened so uh, yeah quite exciting I mean it's an amazing feeling to have a winner on its own let alone a double on the day which was was quite amazing that's right and you know the every winner that I've had um, 
feels exactly, I have the same thrills, the same excitement, the same enjoyment as I had with my very first winner. So uh, I enjoy each and every one and savour the moment and sit around and wait for the next one to arrive, you know. Well, you've certainly been a very keen race goer for many years. As I said, you were a face that was around from when I first came to the country some 25 odd years ago. And yeah. uh, just tell us a little bit about how it all started. I mean, I, I believe you were in the Navy and you've now got your shipping company, but you always had a passion for horse racing, didn't you? That's correct. I, uh, I grew up uh, here in Milneton and I was amongst racing people who all lived around us and everything. And uh, when I went off to school, started school, I actually went to school with a lot of racing people's uh, children. So I always had these people around me and the thing. Um, and then obviously with me going off to sea and with the Navy, I sort of racing took a bit of a back step. And then uh, when I came back or when I left the Navy and started off in the commercial world, I um, had a, uh, sort of just an interest in following racing and that. And then I got very friendly with Brett Crawford and Patrick Wynn and Ryan Skelton when they were here. And we all used to hang around together. And uh, of course, I then started going back to races and watching racing and at race courses and that. And then when Brett uh, moved uh, from Cape Town to Durban as assistant trainer to Dennis Stryer, uh, Brett phoned me up one day and he said, listen, we got a filly here and uh, maybe you'd like to have a share in the horse. And the, the name of the horse was Laura Dora. And uh, I said, yeah, OK, let's try it. And the bug bit me. And uh, the very first time she ran, she ran second, got beaten, I think, quarter length uh, at Gravel in a night meeting. So it was my first experience of going to a night meeting as well. And, well, that was it. <laughs> I was caught hook, line and sinker. And uh, over the years, I've just, you know, enjoyed horses. I and, uh, had horses with, right at the beginning, with Glenn Puller and Eric Sands. And Eric I've known for way over 30 years as well. So uh, it's been more of a friendship. And, uh, of course, I've been, I enjoy the sport. And um, that's how it all started. And then... Pit Buerta rode uh, many winners for me um, and uh, when he went on his own decided to support him as a young new trainer into racing. And then other horses I've got had with Pit Stain um, and I've always enjoyed Pit and uh, of course I've also got two horses up in Durban with Garth Buller. And, uh, yeah, so they spread around a bit, but uh, we enjoy it. Yeah, you've certainly got a lovely band of trainers and they're all really, really hungry to get the winners. And uh, what a great string you've got at the moment as well. They've all been earning. Yes, I've been fortunate. Um, you know, a, a, a lot of my horses or shares that I've got in horses with Pit Buerta at the moment. I've, um, Pit and probably Eric have got the, the majority of the horses. But um, the thing is, and when Pete started off, I said to him, look, you've got to, this is a game, it's a waiting game and it takes time. You can't expect to put a horse on the racetrack and it's going to win. And um, <clears throat> we looked at horses and I bought chairs and them and that. And I said to Pete one day, I said to him, every horse you've got in your yard yeah, is capable of winning a race. I said, I don't think you've got any grade one horses here at the moment but you've got horses that will start earning and start winning you've just got to have patience and wait and sure it's been a bit of an uphill battle but um, we've uh, we've got got the horses going and they're now starting to pay back the in recording all their wins and everything you know so I've, I've been lucky the horse I've got with Eric Sands, um, which is probably my uh, one of my best horses at the moment, is Driving Miss Daisy. And she's been sort of the bridesmaid and not the bride in three grade one races. We've run second every time. And I think the, the most um, exciting race was when she ran in the Will Havington in Durban and I got beaten by Summer Pudding on the line. But... Uh, 
she gives everything of her best as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's been been good. Yeah, she's a smashing filly. She does try her best every time. You said she's not going to Durban this season, though. She'll stay here for the winter se uh, season. Yep. Uh, Eric and myself, we, we, Eric said to me, look, um, to send her up there now, uh, the ground's a bit hard for her, and she's a valuable filly, and we don't want to run the risk of putting her under any stress or picking up any minor injuries or even major injuries. So we've decided we'll keep her here for the winter season, we'll run her here in the winter season, and then probably look towards maybe the end of the season again to stud. But I'll leave that up to Eric, that's his decision when, when he wants to retire her and that, you know. But the winter season down here is lots of fun as, as well, so it'd be nice because you won't have to travel, you'll be here to see her run in any case. Correct, that's uh, the, the exciting part about it, you know, and I'm just hoping I can crack one of these graded races and we can get some bold black type for her, you know. Yeah, I know I love you, you love all your horses, but looking at your wall in your office, is, there's a few favourites that stand out, aren't there? Yeah, um, the, the ones, I think, well, Angel of My Table was the first really good filly I had. She was trained by Glenn Puller and um, she, she was gutsy and she was quick. She never went further than 1,200 metres, but she was very, very fast. She was lightning quick, and she had this tremendous acceleration from the 300 metre mark to finish. And uh, she won some nice races for me. Um, and uh, when she retired, unfortunately, uh, the, the horses she threw in uh, during the breeding um, weren't really anything outstanding or great. But that's the way things work out in breeding, you know, you can't always breed champions. So uh, she was very good. Uh, the other two horses, good horses I had was Captain Harry and Captain Bag. They were both Captain L uh, Geldings and they won five each. Each of them won five races for me. They were big, strong, powerful horses. Uh, they were a handful. I mean, I remember Captain Harry, the only guy who used to ride them at work was Eric himself because uh, the jockeys didn't want to ride them. They were two strong horses and to pull them up at work uh, took some guts. But uh, they were two lovely horses that I had as well. Um, I bought a horse for when Crunchy Crony was still training um, called San Shawis. And uh, he uh, bought the horse and then Crunchy moved overseas and the horse ended up in Pitt Stain's yard. <clears throat> and he ran two, he only ever won one race in, in South Africa, but he um, uh, ran second in the Derby and third in the Guineas for me. And then uh, we had got an offer for him to go overseas. So we sold him to uh, Dubai and he went to Mike de Kock and Mike, got some good results out of him. I'm not sure exactly how many races he won, but I think he won three races over there. And he did very, very well. Um, it was enjoyment for me to follow him, even though I didn't own him anymore, but to follow him and see how good he actually could have been, you know, and was. So, uh, yeah, but I've, I've had so many horses and different types, some of them, have not really proven themselves on a racetrack, but I would say out of all horses I've had, 75% have produced something or other. Well, I can tell there certainly is a great passion for horse racing and your horses. Yeah. And uh, as I said, you've got a great string at the moment that are all earning. But what a feeling that must have been, we'll go back to the double, must have been amazing. And you were sitting on the 90 mark, weren't you, waiting for the, the hundredth <laughs> winner and then boom, boom, you get two. I was, it, it was amazing. I, I had 99 winners and uh, I was sitting thinking to myself, OK, well, which trainer's going to give me this hundredth winner? Uh, Eric had a crack at it first of all, unfortunately we, the, uh, all the up was running and he didn't get there. So the following week I had Captain Dizzy running with Pete Boerton, I thought okay, here we go, you're going to crack it here now, and again, failed. So then the following week I had, uh, Pete Stain had um, West Coast Wanderer running, and he, he'd been a bit disappointing because 
where everybody had told us he needs distance. And the further he went, the worse he ran. And eventually I said to Peter, I don't know anymore. And he said, I'll bring this horse back to sprinting. And um, he showed a bit of promise over the sprint distances. So on the day uh, he was running and I, at the same race meeting, I had Rocking Ringo running. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Richard Free rode uh, West Coast Wonder and he produced the goods and he tracked it home and won. And so I was super excited having my 100th winner. And then lo and behold, two races later, Rocking Ringo comes out and wins the race as well. So that was my very first double that I've ever had on in racing. And that gave me 101 winners. So from sitting on 99, all of a sudden, boom, there I get to 101 in one fell swoop, you know. So yeah, I was super excited and it was a great feeling. Yeah, yeah well sitting on 101, that's so we uh, can get that up a little bit more. Oh, uh, we'll the... try. Eh? <laughs> yeah. And it's lovely because your family are involved as well. I know your wife, Chrissy, often see her at the races and she's keen as well? Yes, yeah, she's, she's keen on racing and she, she comes along with me now and again to races and that. And uh, she always says to me, have you got any chances of winning? You know? And I said, yeah, I think I've got a chance today. She said, well, I better stay at home because if I come, maybe the horse doesn't win. But she loves racing and she enjoys it. And she's, um, she plays her place accumulators. She loves playing that bet. And she has, I'm the one that knows everything about horses and racing and that. And she will win PA after PA after PA. And it takes her about 10 minutes to pick a place accumulator. So I don't know how she does it. <laughs> but it's always lovely to see because that's what racing's all about. You're always there. You've always got a nice bunch of people with you. you. You race with nice people. You're having a good time, a good day out. Come win, lose or draw. You have a nice day at the races. And you know, the thing is, this, this is, is a sport. And I've always said that in sport, you competitive and this, I've met so, so many really great people in racing and uh, it's, it makes it all the fun, you know. Um, it's, it's a, uh, you're putting your wits or your, your knowledge up against an animal and an animal that's been trained to raise. So <clears throat> I, I find it super exciting because um, you, you see the end of hard work that the trainer's done in getting the horse to that race. And if it wins, it's like a job, job accomplished. So uh, I really enjoy it and it's so, super exciting to watch, you know. Yeah, well, thank you for chatting to us this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you on the track and uh, build on that 101 winners. You've certainly got a, a great season ahead, especially with driving Miss Daisy for the, for the season. Yes, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, well, it's taken me over 25 years to get 100 winners. I hope it doesn't take another 25 for the next 100, but we'll give it a crack. And thanks very much, Fee, for giving me the opportunity on your program. And thanks very much, I enjoyed. Well, lovely to have you on the show. Best of luck, we'll be watching uh, very carefully for the next 100. Um, great to have Ron Karras on the show. He's certainly hit the headlines at the moment. He's got a string going really, really well. Had his first double and we are certainly looking forward to him improving on his 101 winners. He sat on the 99 mark for long enough, but now it looks like it's onwards and upwards for Ron. We caught up with Callan Murray at Atlantic Beach Golf Course before he teed off with his new boss, Brett Crawford. We're certainly looking forward to having this talented jockey riding down here in Cape Town. Of course, we've got the winter series ahead and then the, we'll be going into the Cape season. And he certainly is a good rider and we're looking forward to following him this year. Talented rider Kellen Murray has just made the move to Cape Town and it's great to be able to catch up with him this morning to see what his future plans are with the Brett Crawford stable. Kellen, thanks very much for taking the time this morning and welcome to Cape Town. Yeah, thanks very much for having me on the show and yeah, it's great to be in the Cape. 
Now tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously um, you've had a great uh, career in Joburg and you've won many grade ones, but how did you get into racing in the first place? Well, it's a funny story. I'd never even seen a horse and a family friend was a steward by, by the name of Dave Durant. And he said, uh, you know, I should try it out. And um, I applied for the academy, got accepted and haven't looked back. It's been a fabulous uh, run for you, hasn't it? You've won nine grade ones, which is great already at 24. Yeah, look, I've been very fortunate throughout my career. I've had opportunities overseas and um, a lot of opportunities to win group one. So yeah, I've, been, I've certainly been blessed. And one of the highlights must have been when you won three grade ones on the same day. Yeah, I know, it was magnificent. Um, that really set me off. It was just out of my time that that happened. And, it gave me a lot of confidence going forward with my career. And as you said, you've worked overseas. Is it Hong Kong, Singapore and Australia? So you've had a bit of time in some, some great countries. Must have taught you a lot? Yeah, so I did Australia straight after my apprenticeship uh, with David Hayes. And I really enjoyed my time with him. It was only two months. Um, then I came back to South Africa. I did Hong Kong for two months. That was a successful stint and decided to return and um, ride a bit here. And I did a full season before then returning to Hong Kong. Um, we didn't go really as planned, but it was still, still a great experience nevertheless. And I had a good time in Singapore, but I'm really enjoying being back home. And working in those big countries, uh, I know a lot of jockeys say it's very good for, for judging the pace and the time of a race. Yeah, look, um, I think even in track work, you, you're working with time. So you learn a lot from that aspect. Although I do think feel is extremely important, which South African jockeys definitely have um, an advantage of overseas jockeys, but the time Knowing times definitely does, um, sometimes it corrects your feel when you are wrong. And Brett just recently approached you to come and ride for him in Cape Town and a great stable to be riding for and you obviously jumped at that opportunity. Yeah, look, um, I certainly love the Cape. I've been travelling up and down and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Um, and when Mr Crawford gave me the offer, um, I did obviously give it a bit of thought but um, I know a lot of great jockeys have come out of his yard and uh, I was very keen to take the opportunity up. Timing wise it seems quite good because there's a lot of, of top jockeys in Johannesburg and, and we're lacking in some top riders down here so it probably opens up quite a big opportunity for you not maybe just riding for Brett but some other trainers as well? Yes of course I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunities so hopefully I can get on board some of those horses but I do thoroughly enjoy working with the team I've done that um, throughout my career with Mr. DeCock previously, so I'm looking forward to a new experience with Mr. Crawford. Yeah, you've certainly had a great career so far and been associated with some big trainers. And of course, your sponsor is Ridgemont Highlands, so they're based down here as well. So that's great for you as well. Yeah, it's very fitting. Um, Ridgemont has been great since I've been back from my overseas stints. And, um, Hopefully I can get on some of the horses and ride them a few winners too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know it's a question that always comes your way in, in terms of your height and everything. Is it a bit of a battle to keep your weight down? You seem to be monitoring it very well. Yeah, look, it's not easy. I've got to eat well, but um, I think I've learned the correct channels of managing my weight as opposed to sweating and, um, and you know, the more traditional ways jockeys lose weight. So it still does have to happen now and again, but um, yeah, I've got, I've got to keep, keep it on track all the time. Well you've only just recently arrived here in Cape Town, you found yourself a, a nice place to live close by to, to stables and you've already sort of uh, hit the ground running as to speak, you've been uh, riding some work for Brett this morning at Gallops? Yeah look um, I've been working every day at Mr Crawford's yard and I thoroughly enjoy it, I rode some Gallops this morning and I think that'll just become an everyday routine and hopefully just start bringing the winners home. Yeah, well, you're starting to get to know the horses. He's always got a big string and some, some very nice individuals. So what have you got really to look forward to? Yeah, look, um, I think Mr Crawford has a very, very strong yard of youngsters and um, there's a lot that will, will be uh, making their debuts coming up. So I'm really excited for a lot of them. And I know he hasn't got many horses maybe going to Durban this season, but will you still be allowed to go and ride a few horses in the, throughout the Durban season? Yeah, Mr Crawford um, has told me from the jump that if opportunities come up to travel, I should take them with both hands. But for now, um, I haven't got any, any uh, set in stone commitments, so I'm pretty happy to just sort of base myself here and get a feel for it. And what is Callan Murray's real goal in life now, uh, riding-wise? You know, for me, I just want to try and win as many Group 1 races as possible. Um, realistically, for me, like a championship wouldn't be anything on the cards this season. And, you know, with travelling, it can be difficult. So I just aim to try and win some of the bigger races. And that's definitely been a goal of mine since, since the start.
Yeah, fantastic. And obviously you watch a lot of riders and, and, and jockeys. Who, who sort of uh, gives you the most inspiration? Look, I'll be honest, from day one it's been sort of Bernard um, has been a, a role model of mine. Um, I think he's a great rider and obviously we're very similar in height and that sort of thing. So, yeah, he's been one of the big ones, but I mean, I look up to a lot of jockeys and I'm always trying to learn from them. Yeah, and it's been wonderful uh, for me. I've been watching a lot of the international riders. Uh, when Tom went to Australia this weekend and won a big race and all the quarantine they've all been having to do, a lot of effort goes into riding these horses. It does, you know, it's not an easy job, but we do it because we love it and I certainly do, so it's great. Just while I'm chatting to you, golf is another of your yeah. passions. You enjoy playing golf. We're actually here at Atlantic Beach this morning where you're going to be teeing off with your new boss, uh, Brett Crawford. And it's great that we've got lots of nice golf courses in Cape Town. It's something to uh, take your mind off racing in between. Yeah, look, I'm somewhat sick for golf. I really love it. I used to play every day I could in Joburg and I'm looking forward to experiencing some new, new courses and also meeting new people. It's a great way to network. And it's great for the mind, isn't it? You want to get away from, from racing and the pressures of that, just have a little bit of time out. Exactly, yeah, it keeps my mind off things um, and it also keeps me active throughout the day, which is very good. Fantastic. Well, best of luck, Callum, and thanks very much for chatting to us this Thank morning. You. Great to have Callum Murray on the show. We're really looking forward to following his progress here in Cape Town with the Brett Crawford stable. He's certainly got a good race record and we look forward to his future here and hope he rides lots of winners. Some very exciting racing coming up across the country over the next two weeks. But that's a wrap from us for this evening. And we look forward to seeing you again in two weeks' time on Breeding to Win.